Well, hello, good morning, good morning. Wow, what what a wonderful worship service we had. We're just going to give it a minute or two just to allow everyone to move from the first live stream onto the next live stream. So we're just going to give them a minute because we really don't want anyone to miss out. Hallelujah. That is so wonderful. We just praise God. You see, God is good. God is great. God is holy. And you see, before him, we just bow down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Shall we open up in prayer? Lord God, this morning, we just want to come before you. Holy God, we bow down before your sovereignty as we bring you praise, as we bring you honor, and as we bring you glory. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. As we worshiped you this morning, Lord, your word teaches us that you live among the praises of your people. And so we just come and we just want to thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that we have to spend time in worship as we sing praises to you, our King. Lord, be glorified this morning. Be lifted high this morning, O King of kings, O Lord of hosts. You are holy and you are sovereign. Lord, we are praying for the word this morning. We are praying, Holy Spirit, you have birthed this word. And I want to pray, Lord God, that as me, the vessel, are speaking the word, that you would be the fire that burns through any iniquities, any any wrongdoings, Lord God, so that the word of truth will penetrate into our hearts, Lord. I want to pray, Lord God, for every person who is watching this live stream, every person who is watching this replay this morning. Lord, and I just want to come and I want to pray, Holy Spirit, for your fire, for your, for your anointing, for your Shekinah. God, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray, Lord God, that as we we move and as we journey through this message this morning, Lord, that that it will be a word of awakening, that it will be a word of empowering, Lord God, Father God, but that it will also be a word that will propel your church right into our destiny, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. God is so good and it is so amazing to, to connect with you on this platform this morning. And it is so wonderful to just know how the enemy is trying to limit and stop the work of God. Yet the kingdom of God will always prevail. Hallelujah and glory to God. So this morning... The topic of the word that I want to share with you is don't stop overcoming. You see, I don't know about you, but everywhere we look in this time in which we are facing, with this lockdown, with, with the, the COVID-19 happening and, and the limitations in which we find ourselves in, there's so many restraints, there's so many things happening. And everywhere we look, everyone we talk to, we can hear and we can see how people are battle or how people battle with insecurities. We can see how people become insecure insecure, insecure in their marriages, insecure in their financial situation, insecure in their, in, their, um, uh, uh, in their work, in their career because of the economical insecurities that's happening all around us. We can everywhere we look, every people we talk to, we can see how people are faced with different types of fear. Just take some time and listen to conversations happening around you and see how people have the fear of the financial uh, breakdown how people how people come and they have the fear of rejection the fear of failure the fear of being pushed away you see fear is very much part of the things that we are are faced with today and then we can see how the enemy comes and he's trying to limit 
the people of God. He's trying to tell us that our limitations only go to a certain extent. Yet scripture comes and he says that with God all things are possible. And the enemy comes and he's telling us that we are so limited. Our abilities is so limited. Our strengths are so limited. So this morning I want to start off with you and I want to take your attention to John 8 verse 31 to 32 the book of John the gospel of John uh, chapter 8 verse 31 to 32 I want to read with you here and it says to the Jews who had believed him Jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples so let's pause there for a minute so you see, we are faced, and, and you and I, as we sit here, we are faced with that. We are faced with that insecurities. We are faced with that rejection. We are faced with that, that fear that we walk with. And here Jesus comes, and he's speaking to his disciples, and he says, So if we hold on to his word, then we are truly his disciples. So you see, you and I, as we sit we want to be truly Christ's disciples. We want to be followers of Christ Jesus, which means we have to hold on with everything that is within us onto his word. Why? The answer to that question why we find in the very next verse, because it's there when he comes in verse 32 and he says, Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You see the enemy is, gonna, is coming at this time which we are facing and he's trying to limit the people of God. He's trying to build in a fear. He's trying to build in a... a, 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 a um, insecurity in the people of God but here God comes and he says you and I as you are watching this live stream right now the truth will set you free and I was thinking about this now my name is not Philip I cannot worship the way Philip um, sings but this just came to me and it says but the voice of truth tells me a difference not be afraid you see it is the truth that sets the people of God free because for, for the enemy is trying to enslave us with that insecurities with that fear and, and and that limitations so when Jesus went into the desert and he was there tempted by Satan remember Satan came on and he kept on pestering Jesus he kept on uh, to bring Jesus down with the lies and every time Jesus came and he said it is written every time the enemy came with an attack every time the enemy came with a lie Jesus came and he says for it is written for it is written for it is written hallelujah hallelujah so this morning as we are listening to this and maybe you are faced with some fears maybe you are faced with some insecurities maybe you face some 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 uncertainties right now in your financial situation in your work in your in your in your life maybe there's a place of insecurity which you are faced right now i want to take you to the book of john 1 oh and I've, i'm so excited about this john 1 john 1 verse 1 to 4 John 1 verse 1 to 4 and this is so amazing and just read this you see this is the truth that we are journeying on this morning this is the truth because we are God's disciples and we will hold on to his truth and right now as we start with John 4 I want to invite you to take a journey with me through the word of truth, the truth that is setting you free as you are faced with that battle in your life right now. John 1 verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of men. Hallelujah. It is written, church, this morning as you were listening to this message. It is written that in the beginning 
was the word that word is jesus christ that word is jesus christ the creator of everything and you see the one who creates the thing is the one that controls that thing so in your life in my life right now you see the enemy is trying to deceive us the enemy is trying to bring us down the the enemy is trying to limit us church let me tell you in the beginning was the word and the word is the one that control our life and then he comes at the end and he says in him was life In Christ Jesus, in other words, there is life. And that life is the light to all men. That light that is in all men. So you see, Jesus brought everything into existence. Jesus Christ is the one that is the author. And he can come and change things by simply speaking the word. Because everything has been created. Everything has called into existence by the word of God. And that word, that word of truth is the light within your life and within my life right now. So as we went and as we we spoke about the light that Jesus is in our life, because scriptures say in the book of John, he's the light in our life. Jesus Christ is the light in your life this very day so as he comes in 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 in, in, and we read about him being the light in our life i cannot help but to run to, to psalm 119 and i'm quoting scripture because it is the truth that sets us free hallelujah and it is the word that is the truth of god psalm 119 verse 105 it says there that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path you see the enemy wants to come and he wants to steal he wants to break down he wants to destroy he wants to bring insecurities in your life but the word of truth the one that says do not be afraid is the one that comes into your life right now and he says that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path you see his light hear his truth his word will come and it will show light onto this road which we walk so yes we are faced with secure insecurities and fear and this is where psalm 119 was so amazing to me so i want to start That was my introduction, right? So I want to start this teaching this morning, moving forward from Psalm 119. And we started the sermon where we spoke about the insecurities, the fear of failure, the sadness that we walk around in our hearts on a daily basis. And he says, thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. You see, we, Scripture is talking about two things here. This, this, this psalm is talking about two things. It's talking about my present, my feet, where I'm standing right now. And it's also talking about my future, which is the path which I'm about to walk on. So there where you are right now, I, I told you, I started off this word this morning about the limitations, about the fear, about the insecurities that we are faced with on a daily basis. So let's look down at our feet for a minute. Psalm 119, that light that shines upon our feet. So here the psalmist come and he's telling us and he's looking, look down at your feet. Look where you stand right now. Yes, we are faced with economical uncertainty. We are faced with economical social insecurities. We are faced with a fear of rejection. We are faced with the insecurity that I'm not successful, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough. We are faced with a fear that, that we're going to be pushed aside and throw, throw to on the sideways. That's where we are right now. And as I was looked, as I looked down at my feet and I saw the current situation, Holy Spirit took me to the book of the prophet of Habakkuk oh my word and I stood astounded because as we go into the book of Habakkuk Habakkuk now let me tell you the prophet Habakkuk is a minor prophet in the Bible and because uh, he's not a minor prophet because he's 
he's uh, less valuable. He's a minor prophet because he's a very short teaching. And let me tell you, it's very short because in the beginning when I was studying, I thought my Bible came out without the book of Habakkuk because there's only three chapters. And if you don't page slowly, you're going to miss this amazing book. You're going to miss this amazing teaching from the prophet Habakkuk. And Habakkuk looked down at his feet and he saw the enemy approaching. And he was scared. The people were scared and the people came to Habakkuk as a leader and they came and they said Habakkuk what are we going to do what's happening go to God and ask God for guidance and Habakkuk right in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1 we see how Habakkuk goes to God he goes to his room and he prays and what does he say his prayer starts with how long O Lord must I call for help but you don't listen or cry violence, but you do not save. I don't know about you, but Habakkuk was faced with the same fear and anxiety and insecurity and uncertainty the way you and I face these battles right this very day. Habakkuk went in and it felt as if God has forgotten him. It felt as if God is not giving him that breakthrough and that, that deliverance that is so desperately needed. So we can understand that Habakkuk, as he looked down at his feet, he felt the fear. He felt the limitations. He felt the insecurities which you and I experience in our life right now but i want to share with you and this is something and this is what's making habakkuk so amazing habakkuk 3 verse 17 to 19 you see god came and he told habakkuk he said habakkuk you you are about to lose this fight you are about to be to be slain you will some of you may die some of you are going to be taken into captivity you are about to lose this fight and what did Habakkuk do? Read there Habakkuk 3 verse 17 to 19. And he says there, Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though, <laughs> though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go to heights. Hallelujah. You see, Habakkuk stood there and God told him that you are about to lose this fight. You are about to be slain. And those of you who's not going to die is going to be taken into captivity. And Hab Habakkuk came and he says, you know what? Even if my whole world falls apart, God, I will worship you. I will worship you with all that I have. Hallelujah. So here we come and we can see how Habakkuk turned his eyes towards heaven. Habakkuk did not face the rejection. Habakkuk did not look at the failure. He did not look at the battle where he's being slain. Habakkuk looked up to the Lord and he hold on to the victory that looks to the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, you as you watch this message right now, there's fear, there's failure, there's insecurities. Let me tell you that it's not game over. We might lose the fight, but we have for a long shot not lost the war. It is still going on. We are not in a place where it is checkmate. It is not game over for you and I. We stand in a place where God is coming and he will renew and where he will restore. So there where we stand right now with our feet, the word of truth comes and he says, that it is not game over. He says that it is not the war that has been defeated. The, the war has not defeated us. Hallelujah. The war did not stop yet. Hallelujah. 
How can I be so certain about that? How can I be so sure you might, uh, might ask me? How can I be so sure that it's not game over? Because it is written, church. Jesus said it is written. And he kept on going back to scripture. Jesus said it is written. This morning I want to tell you that it is written in Psalm 119, 119. That he's a light unto my feet. He's a light that shows the truth into my present. But he's also the light. He is the truth unto my path, which is my future. He is the light unto my future where I may walk. In this path where I may walk. So let's talk about this path where we may walk. Let's talk about this path which I still need to walk. Remember, it's not game over. We are still moving forward. Holy Spirit showed me the um, animations. The animations. Do you know those picture stories? The animation stories. The forests. Always there's this princess that has to go through a forest. Or there's this warrior knight in shining armor that has to conquer something. But first he has to walk through a dark scary forest. And for some other reason there's always an owl with his big eyes watching him wherever he goes. You see the enemy will forever watch us. The, forever, the enemy forever wants to come to steal, kill, destroy and stop the work of God. So this path, this path that you and I have to walk this very day might go through a dark, scary forest. It might even go next to the beach where it's fresh air that we can breathe in and we can hear the seabirds calling each other. It even may lead us to a path where we can see the green pastures. We can see the quiet waters which Psalm 23 uh, promises us. But we still can't get there. You see, this path that we have to walk this day can go very different routes. Very different ways that it can go. So obviously that comes and it brings us with so many insecurities, so many uncertainties again. Hallelujah, I get so excited, I, I throw all my scriptures away. So, as we walk this path, remember Jesus said it is written. It is the truth, the light that brings light and the truth into our, our life. It is the word of Jesus that brings the truth into our life. So this journey, this path that you and I have to walk, Hebrews 13 verse 5 comes and he says, Never will I leave you and never will. Will I forsake you? You see, your path may run through this scary, dark forest with eyes watching you. Your path may lead you into a place where you know there's green pastures, you know there's quiet waters, yet you don't know how to get there. Hebrews 13, 5, the word of truth is telling you this morning, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Hallelujah. The Lamb who is Jesus Christ, is shining upon this path that you and I are walking on this very day. Isn't that amazing? So I want to take you further into the book of Jeremiah. And this is the scripture I wanted to use. And this is so interesting how Holy Spirit works. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I want to share this with you. This is a path that we are walking on, you and I. The word of truth, Jesus Christ, comes this morning and he is sharing with you the word of truth. And what is the word of truth saying? It's saying in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you. You see this path where you are walking, God is aware of the plans that he has for you. Declares the Lord. He's not promising, he is declaring. God is declaring that he is in control. He is the great I am who is in control of your life. So for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Prosper you and not to harm you. You see that path might go through a dark scary forest with big eyes watching you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Hallelujah. Plans to give you hope. And a future. There's a future. 
You see, in this time where we face this insecurities, this time where we face this fear, there's a plan already in place. There's a plan already secure. And no one but the Creator can change that plan which God has for you and for me. And that plan is to prosper. That plan is for us to have hope and a future. Isn't that amazing? We have a hope and a future. Hallelujah. So I want to share with you how Holy Spirit worked because this scripture was on my heart and I kept on proclaiming it in my own life over and over and over and over. And Holy Spirit steered me to Jeremiah 31 verse 1 to 4. Jeremiah 1, uh, 31, verse 1 to 4. Now, this is the scripture which Holy Spirit, as I was working through this word, that Holy Spirit shared me with. And it's written then. At that time, again, declares the Lord. Amazing is that? I will be the God of all the clans of Israel and they will be my people. You see, there's a plan. There is hope. There is future. And God declares the word of truth this morning that he is the creator. He is the one that controls that plan of that future in our life. So the fears, the insecurities, the doubt, the heartaches, the rejection that the enemy wants to bring your way, we break it in the name name of Jesus because the creator has a plan for you the creator is the God of all clans of Israel hallelujah hallelujah it gets better hold on to this this is what the Lord says <coughs> excuse me the people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert I will come to give rest to Israel the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. God has told this to his people in Israel, which makes you and I part of that. And he says, oh wow, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again, you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. You see, again, God will raise us up. Again, we will take up our tambourines and start dancing and worshipping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, we will rise up and we will win. We will overcome this fear, this rejection, this insecurities. Are you listening to this word this morning? Are you hearing what the word of truth is telling you this morning? There where your feet are right now is not game over. There is a plan. There is a purpose. There is a future for you and I right now. So the enemy might come there where your feet is standing right now. And he might come and he might tell you, <laughs> you have failed as a pastor. You have failed as a leader. You have failed as a disciple. You have failed as a wife or a husband. You have failed as a friend. You have failed as an employee. The enemy might come today and he might tell you that you have failed. This morning I want to tell you that the word of truth calls the enemy a liar and a thief. Satan is a liar and he's a thief. Because the word of truth says there is a hope and there is a future. And we will take up our tambourines. We will be his people and we will worship him. We will dance and sing praises to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to come to you again and reiterate that you have not failed. Maybe you've lost the fight. You have not lost the war. You have not lost the war at the, as yet because the creator is still in control and he is still on the throne. Hallelujah. So don't know about you. Jesus came in John 16 verse 33 and he says, I, Jesus, have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. 
John 16 verse 33. I, Jesus, have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome this world. Take heart, in this world you're going to have trouble. In this world you're going to face, there where your feet is standing right now. You may face trouble, you may face hardships, you may face rejection. Take heart. Christ, the one who is the light unto his people's life, is the one who overcame this world. We will be victorious. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you today. In the midst of this storm, to make a conscious decision to take up your tambourine. Yes, your heart might be sore. Yes, your mind might be telling you other things. Yet your eyes would see things that doesn't make sense with what the word of truth is telling you. The world is just a facade because the creator is the one that brings the true breakthrough. I want to encourage you today to pick up your tambourine. Pick up your worship and stop, start worshiping the way that we learn in Jeremiah. Take up your tambourine and worship. You are more than a conqueror. It is written this morning. Remember when Jesus was in, in the desert? He quotes scripture. He said that it was written. This morning, there where you find your feet right now, the word of truth comes and he says, it is written that you are more than a conqueror. It is written that you will walk on snakes and scorpions. It is written that you will fly on eagles wings hallelujah you will win in other words you will win in other words hallelujah and i want to close off with this for god is the one who calls all things into existence he is the one that will carry you and protect you remember what he said right in the beginning if we are his disciples we will hold on to his truth, the word of truth. And it is that truth that shines the light onto our path. We don't know where it leads. We don't know it might go through a dark forest. But we do know that he will protect us. He will keep us strong. He will keep us focused. And he will keep us safe. And those big eyes in the forest, all they can do is look. All they can do is look. Because God is our protector. So today, maybe you feel like you are losing this grip. And I'm about to pray for you this morning. If it feels like you are losing the grip. If you are losing faith. If you are, are getting sucked into this pool of fear and anxiety and, and insecurities. I want to pray for you this morning. But before I pray for you. If that is you. I want to encourage you to surround yourself with people who loves you and support you. And above all, surround yourself with people who pray with you. People who will take and spend some time with you in the presence of God. I want to leave you with one last verse. And remember, we can because God is. You can because God is. He says, I am. I am. He is the provider. He is the healer. He is the protector. He is the conqueror. He is the one who overcame this world. He is the one that conquered death. We can because He is. Hallelujah. There where you are right now, I want to pray for you. I know that those, as you walk in this journey, the enemy is trying to bring you down. I know that the enemy is trying to tell you all sorts of lies. I know how the enemy is trying to, to make you feel that you have been defeated. I want to tell you this morning, the enemy is a liar and he's a thief. Because the word of truth says you are more than a conqueror and you will soar. On the wings of eagles. If, you, if that's you maybe right now. There where you sit. I want to ask that you would just open up your heart. 
open up your heart and allow Holy Spirit to touch you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, I just want to come right now and I want to pray for every year that hears this. Lord God, I want to pray for your people. Lord, you said in your word, it is written this morning that we are your people. Lord God, in the book of Jeremiah, it is written that you would come and that you are, you are our God, the God of all clans of Israel. Lord God, I just want to come this morning and I pray that you would shine your light, your truth upon your people this morning. I pray, Lord, this morning that you will pick your people up, Lord. Put them on higher grounds, Lord God. Lord God, your word says that we will walk on snakes and scorpions. And this morning, Lord God, I pray that your people will be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Satan, we see your work. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. I pray, Lord God, that right now, as you are the light, that you would shine the scripture, the word of truth, into every individual's heart that is praying and that is crying out to you this day. Speak, Holy Spirit, the word of truth in Jesus' name. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over your bride, irrespective uh, geographically where we are. We plead the blood of Jesus over your people, Lord God, so that your people will be safe and protected in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to come and I want to pray over you. Number six, the priestly blessing. And I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May he give you peace. May he give you the protection that he promised in his word. God bless you. On behalf of myself, the whole Betharon family, we love you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Take care. Bye-bye.